the last Sunday of the decade, and so I thought, well, let's maybe talk about something a little more upbeat, kind of bring the decade to an end. So how about, let's talk about mm, funerals. In my years as a priest, there have been many funerals that I have celebrated. And one of the things that I find that affects me the most is not so much the person who has passed away. And of course I love the opportunity whenever I get it to, you know, speak a message of of reassurance, the hope of resurrection that we share. But one of the things that, that I watch for when I meet with the families is how the family is reacting. Because it seems as though funerals, more than just about anything else, can bring out the best in families or the worst. And I've seen plenty of both. There are times when it's absolutely inspiring to see when a parent has has died, how the kids will come together and they are just so tender with each other, so understanding, so willing to listen and to support and really celebrate the good. But there are other times when death seems to bring out people's old issues. The things that have been hurts or jealousies or just long-held, deep grievances. For some reason, some family members feel that that's the time to let all of that rise to the surface again. rather than a sense of we have lost and we share in that loss together, it seems so very often to be more a matter of, okay, I've lost and this is all about me. And of course, as You may know there are times when when it's coming down to a question of, let's say, inheritance. That the jealousies, the greed can really, really come forth. So, family is tough. I kid sometimes when I've heard so many kids' confessions, one after another, like we did during the season of Advent. Because invariably, they're going to tell me about the difficulty they have with their parents, 
and the difficulty that they have with their siblings. And I've come to wonder over the years, is it really God's plan that Jesus was an only child? Was it really that hard for Mary that she only had one? (laughs) And look who he was. Family life is not easy. It is the greatest blessing that we have, and we would all agree with that. But in our day-to-day lives, with everything going on, we, we can forget that. We're with family members so much. Sometimes, yes, feels like we're stuck with them. Right? Other times we remember how blessed we are. how bad we would feel if we had to be attending one of their funerals for whatever reason. But day after day after day after day after day, you know, they say familiarity breeds contempt. I'm not sure it's always that, but Familiarity certainly breeds familiarity. That's deep. You can write that one down if you want to. (laughs) And sometimes in our day-to-day, we we forget how important, how important, Blessed we are to have the family members that we have. Sometimes as we're going along, as we just take it for granted, well, we've got them there. Well, no. Sometimes we lose track of their importance because of Something like time. Consider the story of the lawyer who lived 500 miles away from her elderly father. They had not seen each other in a number of months. The father calls her up and asks, when are you going to visit? The daughter proceeds to tell him about the demands on her time, her court schedule, meetings, and so on and so on everything that prevented her from visiting. So the father says, I've been wondering about this for some time now. When I die, do you intend to come to my funeral? The lawyer responds, Dad, I can't believe that you'd ask that. Of course I'd come to your funeral. The father replies, good, let's make a deal. Forget the funeral. I need you more now than I will then. Think about how many times in the past year the thought that kind of guided you or helped you make the decisions that you made was don't have enough time. A reminder that we make time for what's really important. 
Sometimes we forget what's really important. Sometimes it's not a matter of time, it's a question of other things. The kids are acting up and they break a family heirloom or a vase or your good bowling trophy or whatever it might be. And boy, they get it. In his book, Raising Your Child to Be a Messiah, Neil Kirshen tells about the medical students who went to see a counselor about whether she should complete medical school or drop out to raise a family. The counselor suggested that she could do both with a little outside help. The student explained that she had vowed never to entrust her children to a housekeeper. The counselor asked why. And the young woman explained that when she was a young child, her wealthy parents would vacation in Europe each summer and leave her with a nanny. One year, when the girl was 11, the housekeeper suddenly quit shortly before the parents were to leave for Europe. The parents were upset that their vacation was jeopardized, but a few days before their intended departure, they found a replacement. When the daughter noticed her mother wrapping up all the family's silverware and jewels, she asked why, since she had never done that before. Her mother explained that she could not trust the new maid with the family valuables. That insensitive remark stabbed the little girl in the heart. Was she not a family valuable of more worth than knives or forks? She never forgot the incident, and as she grew up, she promised herself that she would bring up her own children. There's no way that I can or should stand up here and tell you how you should raise your family. I'm certainly not an expert. God and the church have given me the easy way out, I guess. Hopefully there are no greater blessings. Certainly there are times when there are no greater challenges. But we have to be constantly aware of the blessing that we have. And how do we do that? Well, it may have slipped by us tonight because in that second reading, they did a, a retranslation of the text a while back. And now there's the line in it that just says, and be thankful. The line used to read, and I loved it. It said, dedicate yourselves to thankfulness. In your prayer. should always start with thanks and reminding yourself what indeed are the blessings in your life? What are the valuables that have been entrusted to you? And even though I had a difficult time with them today and even though I don't know how it's going to be tomorrow, They truly are the way that God is revealing his love. And sometimes the invitation to growth to me.
So today, tomorrow, be grateful, be appreciative, and God bless all our holy families.